um, about a year ago, we had some training organised and I had been on a, a huge run and the next day on the aeroplane I was absolutely exhausted. And something quite creative comes from physical exertion. <laughs> As I was mulling over how to use a prop or an activity to talk about stem cells, and it suddenly came to me that paper and origami was a bit like the process. The whole idea starting from a blank slate, depending on the instructions you follow, makes a different object. If you start with a stem cell, you can make any type um, of cell that you find in your body. And that made me think it was quite a nice analogy to talk to the public about. That was where the story started for me, but not where the collaboration with Karen started. We were driving with a scientist to go to a teacher's training event. On that long drive, we started talking about organs, about plants, about you know all kinds of things. It's this really impressive scenery. When we were trying to conceptualize, there's something about the creases that you make in paper that really intrigued me. Um, and it's kind of like those valleys and the mountains. Talking to the origami artists, they talk about mountains as well when they fold their paper, which is really interesting. I think that's what I really like about the origami analogy as well. So it was probably 18 months um, in the making. I love collaborating with different people. They bring in different ideas and different ways of looking at things. And Ken um, also had experience of, of creating workshops for young people um, in maths lessons, and I just thought this is the person that we should work with. It's kind of a false divide between the artists and the sort of rational sciences because there's elements of both in both fields. You know, so the folding, lots of um, geometry in there, but you can certainly make things that are organic and can create emotions of people. I think it's very appealing, especially for children. You know, sometimes you can sort of play down the mathematical aspects and they just enjoy it as a craft activity but you know you can bring in some mathematics and geometry. I'm very lucky because the two projects that I work on both have groups of very enthusiastic and very capable scientists who go out and share their work with different groups of people. To ask them to take part in Edinburgh Science Festival wasn't that difficult. Both of the groups of scientists are looking at how organs develop and how they might recreate that in the lab. We've also built up um, over the years of the two projects, we've had training, we've had other events. So within the groups of scientists now, we have a really strong capacity for engaging. And that shone through with the way that they could easily work with the different members of public that came through the museum. Part of my job is to make sure that the scientists feel confident and secure in the activities that they're going to deliver, um, but also that they're having a good time as part of the engagement work. And so we planned um, a training day that showed the types of activity that we'll be doing so that they could learn some origami, they could learn the other activities, but also they could build um, on their communication skills. We brought in Alette, who is a storyteller, to draw out their personal story as a scientist, as well as the science itself. And we know that when we engage with different groups, it's that human connection that makes all the difference. I think you always have to think about what kind of audience you're addressing and bear in mind that people are not all the same kinds of learners. There's the visual learners and the uh, tactile learners and so on. Yeah, and I guess there's different levels as well within that. So there will be learning that happens at the event. There will be learning when people reflect on it. And so sometimes, for example, um, musing over some artwork, it might not be instant, but it might be something that interweaves with um, other thoughts that you have a few days afterwards or maybe a year down the line or when you next read about stem cells in, in the news. The things I've learned about creating um, projects like this was first of all is to, is to be bold, not to have a fixed idea about what they're going to be like. There's a part at the beginning that's quite exploratory 
for example, where you'd be trying to find the partners that you might work with. They have their own ideas. They have their own talents. And that is what will shape the project. Making sure they feel comfortable and confident with, with what you're doing, but also bring them in to the development. Um, some researchers might have time, some um, might not. And it's about flexibility and adapting what you do in order to facilitate the inclusion of, of the, all of the scientists that can take part. And maybe more importantly, that they feel motivated, inspired and enthused um, by the opportunity and the impact that they are going to have on the people that they interact with at the museum.